on the phone. Tell me about it. Oh, what, yeah. Yeah, man. I got some cards. Sorry. Because uh, did you get Angie? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I saw it on the No, somebody told me. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, no, One of our show. high school hmm. friends told me, hey, did you see? I think Reggie's going to be on your your radio station. So I looked it up, and I searched it, and I found it. And so then that's just, oh, yeah, so we should call Reggie. Yeah. Yeah, he, did, he does a lot of that producer yeah. stuff. Right. Yeah, you just give us a call. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, because I didn't want to say it on air. Yeah. <laughs> but my thing is what I tell people, if you want to buy it in a secondhand store, don't send it. Yeah. There's some oh, yeah, yeah, that's some, a good point. And, and some people, they they want us to clean their trash. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, we, we have a thing where we take, if it's majority good, I mean, we kind of have some stiff but we, we tell them that on the phone. Yeah, that's a good point. Oh, sorry, Brian. <laughs> wow. Okay, click it. Go. Go, go, go. This is Fishbowl Radio Network, and you're listening to Healthy Now, Healthy Later. I'm Kara Perkins, your host, and we've got Brian and Jared co-hosting today with us, as always. Hey, guys. Hi. Jared says hi, Steve. Jared. Jared's been his laptop down there doing something. It's Changing the world. Yeah, we got a lot of people in here. We've got, uh, well, we, we should mention we have David from Salt Harbor. He's down here um, doing what he does best, videotaping and taking some pictures for us. So we appreciate that. Um, and we've got Brent Burmester. Hello, everyone. And we've got Reggie Finch. Howdy. All right. And we were talking about parents, what parents need to know, and how we handle our kids and help them with their issues that could possibly lead them down the wrong path. Um, and I know one thing that we, we deal with in my community and in my house and with our kids is bullying. And um, we try, in, in our house, we try to encourage talking out the situation because they're all going to say things and do things that, you know, are offensive or someone's going to get offensive. So we try to have really open dialogues with the friends and get the well, kids to talk. What? What, Brian? Well, so if you got it. Oh, well, yeah, we have a, a speech at our house about bullying. you got to act right. And we understand you're going to mess up, but we're all going to be honest about it. So, yeah, the speech goes a little something like that. Yeah. But what, so, but how do you, I don't even know where to start with this. I mean, is it, does it start with the open, open communication that you have to get the schools involved and other parents? I mean, what do you do? Well, I mean, the thing is, is, if you don't have open communication, your child will never tell you right. that he's being bullied. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's a, that's a really tough topic, but it's you got to do some intervention. I mean, once the child tells you about the bullying, then you need to go to the church or the school, wherever it's happening, the playgrounds, and, and go to the person in charge and say, this is what's going on. From our standpoint, I am saying our Souls Harbor, from a uh, substance abuse recovery standpoint, you can see um, typically the victims mm -hmm. bullying, they will resort, since they have low self-esteem, will resort to drugs or alcohol because when I put drugs or alcohols or, you know, I'm a pill head, it makes me feel better about myself, sure. right? And yeah. I'm, I'm on top of the world. Um, so we're seeing a lot of victims of bullying um, using substance abuse and even the bullies themselves, when they get real with themselves, they'll figure out that it's based off of a fear of acceptance. It's a uh, insecurity that they have in themselves because they're so insecure, they have to push their weight around. Uh, maybe they aren't smart enough. Maybe something's going on in their lives. Mm -hmm. So we sit on both, you know, the substance abuse problems on both spectrums, and really, that's really what Souls Harbor deals with, mm -hmm. is to help them on the substance abuse. So bullying in itself, you know, you just you got to have the open communications with your son or daughter. You gotta recognize it. You gotta do intervention. You gotta go to the authorities, and you gotta keep on it until either the child is removed from the situation or the child changes the situation. Got it. Right. Right. And that's, you know, that's, and, and it's tough because I know a lot of these kids are getting to an age where, you know, they don't want to say anything because almost saying something makes it worse. Right. Um, you know, because all the kids, you know, and especially I guess middle school age. Yeah. 
I mean, in middle school, we just took it to the tennis courts, but that doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe a red team doesn't that mean. The, yeah, that, 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 but that, that, that was true. Happen, that was true when I was going in junior high and high school. And I, that shows how old I am. That's why I call it junior high. But yeah. it's, it wasn't cool to rat on one kid, right. right? I mean, that's what we used to call it, ratting on the kid, you know? And so you just kind of, you were basically trying to keep it inside as right. long as you could because once you ratted on the kid, then it's. Besides the boy, everybody in school seemed like would be coming down. Why did you have to get your parents involved? Or why did you have to get the principal involved? Why did you have to get the teacher involved? You know, and on and on it goes, right? Right, and you know, I'm thinking some things that I've seen, kind of positive ways to address that we've seen in our community several times where um, there's an awareness raised, and so the teacher kind of, or the principal member kind of pays extra attention, so they're kind of catching the situation as it happens in the hall or whatever, bring the kids in, and sometimes it's just from a misunderstanding or like uh, you guys were saying, the bully is struggle is really the one that's suffering, and right. they they don't just don't know how to articulate themselves. So, is that kind of maybe? I mean, we all kind of need to be more aware. And yes, I mean, again, it goes down to what Reggie said: is you need that open communication, open dialogue with your child because right. they're behavior is to keep it down and if you are picking up those clues and your child is quiet mm -hmm. uh, you know recluse whatever right. you need to bring them out and say hey son or daughter what is going on in your life you just start different and if you have that trust and that open communication that Reggie talked about they will tell you mm -hmm. and then that then now as adults you can take it to the appropriate person Rarely do you see a kid taking it to the principal or the teacher right. or whatever. I mean, that does happen once in a while, but typically, I, I'd say the majority of the time, they'll just keep it in and, and deal with it. And uh, their self-esteem will go low and low and low and low. And I know um, another thing, something else I've seen happen a lot is my husband has been coaching our kids for 15 years or something like that. And he kind of, he'll kind of see it himself, see the, you know, the under the breath Malvin, and he'll just catch it right away like that. Right. So it's not, and, you know, he can kind of, he watches the mannerisms. He's really good at, after all these years of watching the mannerisms, and he can tell that someone is making someone else feel down. And he, he just goes right in and is like, look, guys, we're going to settle this because we got to figure this out. And, and that's a good point, Kara, because uh, as volunteers in the community, whatever we do, what we're schools or we're in the playgrounds or at church right we're dealing with uh, our children's friends and I, right. I just remember a story I was a, a coach in fact a coach back in the late 80s and 90s in Coppell Texas just north of oh, here, yeah. right mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I, I can remember instances where there were whether even six years old or 12 year old children that were bullies and I wouldn't put up with it and, right. I, and then I would deal with it as a coach mm -hmm. and then it kept going then I would tell the parent right and then the third thing is is I remove them from the team if yeah. their, their behavior did not so you know that's a good point we aren't just observers in the bullies sometimes we are and many of us are participating in the community right and sometimes you know that's your moment your inner you know your intervening in moment and you got to step up and, and take it when it's presented in front of you. Right. I think they'll eventually, maybe they'll all be better off for that. Right. Stuff. All right, okay. Now what, what if somebody has a